Good morning and welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday morning of 2020, a day when we celebrate the victory of life over death, of love over hate, and of God over the powers of evil and death and sin. Welcome to the worship of God on this day when we can't gather in, in person, but we are gathered by God's Spirit and by the presence of Christ in our lives. Uh, we gather to celebrate and to tell the story and to sing the praises of God's love for us. So welcome to the worship of God on this Easter Sunday morning. As we begin our worship, I invite you to share with us in the reading of Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. The unfailing love of God endures forever. God is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory and shouts of joy in the homes of the righteous. The strong hand of our God has done mighty things. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of God. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. you to join with me in our call to worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has, he has given, given us new life and hope. hope. He, has he has raised, raised Jesus, Jesus from, from the dead. dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has, he has brought, brought us out of darkness, darkness. He has, he has made, made us light, light to, to the world. world. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Well, good morning, everyone. Indeed, Christ is risen, and that's why we celebrate, that's why we join together every Sunday for worship. Every Sunday is a Resurrection Sunday, but today is a special one out of all as we celebrate Easter. We celebrate the very day that Christ rose from the grave. So let's join together as we sing that story this morning, singing the resurrection hymn, See What a Morning. Yeah. 
creation, God of love, God of glory, God of light, God of life. On this day, we celebrate the triumph of your love. We celebrate the triumph of your life. We celebrate the triumph of your light. For we know that in Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and the darkness cannot put it out. We know that in Jesus Christ life reigns eternally. We know that in Jesus Christ, our lives are restored, made new, and made whole. So we, we gather this day to give you thanks, to praise your name, and to honor you, and to give ourselves anew and afresh on this day of days, to following the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross, to the grave, and to the resurrection. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, on the day that Christ died on the cross and on the day of his resurrection, his victory was assured. Christ is king over all the creation, and death is dead, and love has won. God's love is stronger than death. God is reaching out to you even now, right where you are today, with his love that was so beautifully displayed by Christ on the cross. So as we continue to celebrate this Easter Sunday, as we continue to celebrate this resurrection life that we have in Jesus, let's sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today.
Trusting in the Spirit of God, let us confess our sin. Will you pray with me? When at times we deny you, God, forgive. When the risks of discipleship are high and we are nowhere to be found, God, God forgive. forgive. When we wash our hands of responsibility, God, God forgive. forgive. When we cast our lot with powerful oppressors and seek to buy freedom with silver, God, God forgive. forgive. When fear keeps us from witnessing to your truth or prejudice keeps us from believing it, God, God forgive. forgive. In the bright light of Easter morning, O oh God, our sin is exposed and your grace is revealed. Tender, Tender God, God, raise, raise us, us in your love so that with joy we may witness to your awesome deeds. In the name of Jesus, the risen one, amen. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so will all be made alive in Christ. So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Today we rest in the knowledge that we're adopted as children of God because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and because of the love that he displayed. And so as we sing, low in the grave he lay, we know that Christ's resurrection was a true event of history. And it's an event that changed everything for the lives of those who believe. And so as we sing, let's join together, low in the grave he lay, celebrating again the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior.
us pray. Gracious, loving God, may your Holy Spirit give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that with the eyes of our hearts we may know the hope to which Christ has called us. Lord, help us understand the teachings of your word to find spiritual growth in each and every word. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought the rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards, and on the mountains of Samaria, the planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Reading from Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory and honor and power and might now and forever. Amen.
I'm sure for most of us, this Easter Sunday is strange. Because rather than meeting together in colorfully decorated churches with Easter lilies and banners, uh, rather than meeting together in places with uh, music that seems to be richer and fuller, meeting together with family and getting together with family, uh, we are dispersed. Uh, we, we are spread out all over the place. Uh, some of us are at our homes. Maybe some of us are even at work uh, while we worship this morning. And we feel like this is strange. A strange day, a strange time. But you know, the Sunday that Jesus was raised from the dead, the first day of the week, began in silence. The first Easter Sunday began with the disciples of Jesus Christ dispersed. We're not even sure where they all were. The only people that we are sure about uh, is Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, who on at the break of dawn on Sunday morning, go to the tomb. And we might ask ourselves the question, why did Mary Magdalene and Mary go to the tomb? Uh, did they go to the tomb to sit Shiva? Uh, did they go there just to sit and observe and to mourn uh, and, and to, to weep? Or did they go to see if indeed Jesus had been raised from the dead? There, there's not an explanation in Matthew. All we know is in Matthew's gospel, they go to the grave. They go to where Jesus is. And whatever their reason for going to the grave, they took a risk. They took a risk out of their love for Jesus, unafraid to be identified as Jesus' disciples, as followers of Jesus. They appear at the tomb. It's being watched by soldiers. They're unafraid of the guards that are posted there because their devotion and their love for Jesus is what brought them out early on this Sunday morning to go to that cemetery, to go to that place of the dead, and to keep watch over Jesus' grave. But almost as soon as they get there, an angel appears. And an angel appears and pushes the stone away from the grave where Jesus was buried. And Matthew tells us there was an earthquake that happened as the stone is being pushed away. And the angel just sits on the, on the stone. And the first words that the angel speaks to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are the words, do not be afraid or fear not. It's a command. It's not just a, a, na a nice, gentle uh, kind of soothing comment. It, it's really a command. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. There is no reason to fear. For Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead. That's not the first time uh, the only time in this passage that we will hear those words. When Mary and Mary are leaving the grave to go and tell the other disciples that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead, they encounter Jesus. And after Jesus greets them, he tells them they don't need to be afraid. He says, do not be afraid, fear not. When the angel speaks to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, he also invites them. He invites them to come and to see, to look into the grave and see that it is empty, to come and see what God has done in raising Jesus from the dead. Then he commissions the Marys to go and tell the disciples to go to Galilee and come and see for themselves. And then the angel says to Mary and Mary, you need to go and tell, go tell the other disciples. Jesus tells Mary and Mary to go and tell. 
So on this Easter Sunday morning in this story, there are three phrases that I would just like for us to meditate on for a moment. The first is, fear not. The first words to the angel are, stop being afraid. Stop being afraid in the face of God's life-giving action. Our God is a God of life. Our God is a God of the living, not the God of the dead. Uh, God, God brings life out of death, light out of darkness, love out of hate. And even in the midst of the most dire circumstances, the most confusing circumstances of our lives, we don't need to walk in fear. Because the power of God and the action of God and the love of God and the work of God in our life is more powerful, more life-giving, more strengthening than any other power we can imagine. The angel wanted these women to understand and, he, and Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that Jesus, God raising Jesus from the dead changes everything. It changes the whole situation. In fact, one of the ironies is that God raises Jesus from the dead, but when the earthquake happens and the angel appears, the Roman soldiers become like dead men. The ones who are set to guard the tomb to keep Jesus or his disciples from stealing the body of Jesus do something that no Roman soldier would ever do. They fall back and they're paralyzed by their fear. God raising Jesus from the dead changes the entire circumstances of our life. Because as Paul would remind us, we don't need to fear death. Uh, we don't need to fear illness. We don't need to fear disease. We don't need to fear those that can harm us. We don't need to fear because God is with us. And that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The testimony of the resurrection is we don't need to walk in fear in this world. Now, we may feel like there's a lot to fear these days. And Jesus' call for us not to be afraid doesn't mean we go out and be reckless or crazy, but it does mean that we don't need to worry about our destiny and our fate. We don't need to worry about the one in whose hands our lives are. The love of God, the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead changes everything. The second phrase I would like for us to think about for a moment this morning is that phrase, come and see. If the power of God in the resurrection has indeed been unleashed in this world, then we are invited to come and see the power of God. The angel invites the women to come and look in the tomb and see that it's empty. We are invited once again to look at the situation of the soldiers who are immobilized Soldiers who are strained, tank, strain, uh, trained to stand their ground fall to the ground. The living become like the dead while the dead is raised by the power of God. The promise that Jesus would be raised by God is a word that the crucifixion of Jesus does not have the last word. Death does not have the last word. Hate does not have the last word. Sin does not have the last word. Brokenness does not have the last word. Disease and illness does not have the last word. The resurrection invites us to come and to see what God is doing and what God is about in this world. The resurrection invites us to come to see the vision that John the Apostle had. When he looked and saw the victory of God over all the forces of sin and death. And he saw a new world and a new heaven and a new earth and the river of the water of life flowing from the throne of God. John saw that there was no more crying, no more death, no more sadness, no more brokenness. We're invited to come and see. To come and see what God has done in raising Jesus from the dead. What God is about and what God is doing in our world. The power of God that has been unleashed. The power of God's love. The power of God's grace. The power of God's mercy. And the third phrase is the phrase, go tell. The angel says to 
Mary and to Mary, literally go and announce, not, not just go kind of relate a nice story, but go announce to the disciples that Jesus has been raised from the dead and is going ahead of you. It's almost as if the angel is saying to them with boldness, with confidence, you go and tell these disciples that Jesus has instructions for them and they're to go and meet him. God chose some unlikely heralds, some unlikely messengers. He chose two women to be the first folks that would believe and tell the story of the resurrection. Jesus tells Mary and Mary to go and tell the disciples that I'm going ahead of them to Galilee. And I want you to come there and see me for yourself. Jesus, in a sense, offers forgiveness and restoration to those weak and feeble and un faithful disciples, even before they can repent of their wrongdoing, Jesus invites them to come to life. God is out in this world ahead of us. One writer has said that we sometimes think on Easter that we have to gather in the churches, that we have to gather together in order to see God, when what the angel is telling Mary and what Jesus tells Mary is that God is already out ahead of you. God is not going to be confined in here. God is out in this world seeking to overcome death, seeking to overcome hate, seeking to overcome fear, to bring life and hope and joy. To announce this good news that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father. Now the disciples, when they went to Galilee, and they encountered Jesus there, one of the things that became very obvious to them was that, that after they witnessed the re resurrected Jesus, after they saw the power of God in, re in raising Jesus from the dead and the triumph of life over death and love over hate, they knew that nothing was going to go back to normal. They knew that their lives would never be the same. They knew that God was going to be calling them and inviting them to new challenges and new risks and new opportunities in life. So maybe that first Easter Sunday where the disciples were dispersed, where only a couple of people came to the grave, on that, on that silent Easter Sunday morning 2,000 years ago, Maybe there's a word for us in the silence and the dispersal of this Easter. Maybe there is the invitation for us to stop being afraid. To stop being afraid of the circumstances. To stop being afraid of, of whatever it is that may be keeping us in, in a state of paralysis. But to remember that the God who raised Jesus from the dead is with us and will give us strength even in the face of death. Maybe we need to hear the word of the angel to come and see, to come and see the power of God revealed in, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to come and to see what God is doing in this world, to open our eyes even in the midst of trouble and difficulty, even in the midst of isolation, to see where God is at work. And then maybe we need to hear the word of the angel and of Jesus to go and tell, to go and tell the story, to go and offer the words of hope and the words of life that only Jesus can give. Maybe this first Easter Sunday, which didn't have organs and choirs and, and flowers and, and parades and Easter egg hunts and all of the hoo-ha that we do, could be instructive for us in this time. to because of the presence of Christ not be afraid, to open our eyes and see what God is doing and, in, and then to join God in telling the story of God's resurrection power and resurrection love unleashed in our world through the resurrection of Jesus Christ.
Will you pray with me? Our Father, we confess to you that we would love for this Sunday to be normal. Uh, we would love for this Sunday to be just like every other Easter Sunday that we've experienced. Full of color and sound and noise and celebration. But Lord, help us to realize that perhaps in the lack of normalcy, we are going to be able to hear your voice speak to us more clearly than if everything were the same as it always has been. Help us to realize that your resurrection is not normal. Help us to recognize that the, the love and the power unleashed when you raised Jesus Christ from the dead is not normal for our world. And the calling that you have given to us as your people is not normal. For we are called upon to proclaim the good news of your victory over sin and death in a world that seems obsessed with both. Lord, in the, in the abnormal sit situation in which we find ourselves, Help us to realize that we are called to proclaim an abnormal gospel. And invite people to come and see for themselves the power of your love, the strength of your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this point in the service, uh, each Sunday, we offer an invitation. We offer an invitation to uh, those who gather and worship and hear, uh, some who may not know what it means to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ, some who are seeking the kind of love and life that only Jesus Christ can give. And so our invitation is offered to you. If you do not know the life that Jesus Christ offers, if you don't know the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in your life, if you don't know what it means to experience the God who raised Jesus from the dead, we invite you this day to hear the voice of Jesus calling you, calling you to life, calling you to resurrection, calling you to discipleship. Now, obviously, we're not going to sing a hymn and have people come forward. But we would invite you that if you feel the Spirit of God calling you, if you hear the voice of Jesus and have heard the voice of God calling you as we have worshipped today, we invite you to contact us. We invite you to contact us by sending an email to us at our church's email address, uh, lindenbaptistchurchky at gmail.com. We invite you to just give us a call, perhaps. Uh, the phone number is area code 502-425-7150. Uh, we'll be available and be glad to talk with you. You could drop us a note if you don't feel comfortable making contact either one of those two ways and just say, I would like to talk, or maybe I would like for you to pray for me that I may, that I may come to experience the love and grace of God in my life through Jesus Christ. If that's your decision, if that's what God is calling you to do this morning, we invite you to respond. We also invite our members who are here to renew their profession of faith in Jesus Christ, to renew their commitment to following Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior through the giving of tithes and offerings that symbolize the commitment of our life. So for our members, we certainly invite you to continue your faithful giving. Maybe there are others of you who have felt like you want to be involved in going and telling. 
And we would invite you to offer your gifts, either through this church or through, through some other church, as we are involved not just in Linden, but all over the world, uh, proclaiming the good news of Jesus' resurrection. So this morning, may we commit ourselves, either in, uh, for the first time, to being a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ, or if we've been a follower of Jesus Christ for 50 or 60 years, may we commit ourselves in a new and afresh to not being afraid, to opening our eyes to seeing what God is doing and to going and to telling and sharing that great good news. Will you pray with me? In this moment, O oh God, we dedicate ourselves to you. We give ourselves to you anew and afresh. Maybe even for the first time, we offer our lives to you. And we pray that you would take our lives and use them for your kingdom's work. Take our lives and, and make something new. Take our lives out of the boring, rut, normalcy of our lives and fill us with the energy of your spirit so that like these women who saw Jesus on that first day, we will with eagerness and enthusiasm run to invite others to see Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Each Sunday we take time to offer a prayer of intercession, a prayer for our world, a world that right now looks very different from what it has normally looked like. The level of activity and movement in our communities is significantly diminished. The concerns on our hearts and on our minds, for family, for friends, for neighbors, for people we don't know who may live across the world, but we know are in need of a healing touch. You will have an opportunity as we have a prayer of intercession to say aloud where you are, the names of family and friends and neighbors, situations that you would like to lift in prayer and invite you at that time to say aloud those names. Will you bow with me as we pray? Living and loving God, you have revealed lot new life to our dying creation. Your love wins, God of Easter. Hear us as we pray. Living, loving God, you bring your new life to us through the new life of Jesus and promise that this is who we truly are. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, the powers with which we contend have been rendered powerless. Your love, your life, your presence proclaims our identity. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, reassure your church of your ongoing guidance during these days of pandemic. Strengthen our faith to bridge the gaps created by our need to separate. Make us one in the living Christ. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, lavish your healing grace and hope upon all who are ailing in body and mind and spirit and all, and all who give them daily care. We now join our voices to pray aloud for those in need. Pam. Gail. Linda, Linda. 
May your people bring joy to those who are hopeless, to bring riches to those who are poor, to bring healing to those in need of healing. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, our grateful hearts commend those we love who have risen with you into the heavenly places to experience your peace and your splendor and everlasting life. Living, loving God, because of Easter, we can live in hope. Open our eyes to see how everything has changed. Your love wins even here, God of Easter. Hear our prayer. Amen. A couple of words and announcements. Um, this being Easter weekend, um, just to let you know that um, the church office will not be open tomorrow on Monday. Um, there will not be anybody at the phone um, because we usually take that Monday uh, as, as a break. But to remind you that we will be having our regular uh, weekly schedule of services on Tuesday afternoon at 1.30. Uh, I will be on Facebook Live with the Bible study. Wednesday evening at 6.30, we will do our Wednesday evening prayer service. And then at 2 o'clock, I believe on Thursday afternoon, uh, Larice will be leading uh, another Bible study. Uh, both of those are de designed to help the, the, the people who live at Sunrise Senior Living, but I think they've, they've turned into something that a lot of folks have found meaning and purpose in. And so I invite you to, to, to participate in those uh, services of worship during this coming week. Now, another thing that we sometimes do uh, on Sunday uh, morning uh, at the close of worship is to sing happy birthday to some people who have birthdays. And, and I'm aware of two people who are having birthdays in this week. Uh, the first of those uh, is Lindsay, uh, or Derek's wife. And so Derek, I'd like for us to sing happy birthday to Lindsay. Sure. Happy birthday to you. second person that I know of in our church who's having a birthday this week is Faith. And so I would like for us to sing happy birthday to Faith and y'all join in singing with us. Happy birthday to you. somber note, um, Bill Talbert, who uh, is a member of our church, but also a pastor uh, of a church in Liberia, uh, called me uh, yesterday uh, to let me know that today, April the 12th, is the 40th anniversary of the coup uh, in which his father, who was president of the country at the time, was assassinated as well as most of the leaders of the government and the leaders of the Baptist community in Liberia. And so on April the 12th, 40 years ago, um, the nation of Liberia was thrown into a 20 year uh, kind of civil war and chaos. Uh, and the situation there is still very um, uh, like a tinderbox. And, and Bill asked that we uh, mention that and remember the nation of Liberia uh, on this anniversary uh, of the coup and of the assassination of practically all their leaders uh, as well as uh, the leaders of the Baptist Convention uh, in Liberia. So I mention that and encourage you to pray for Liberia and to pray for the leadership uh, of Liberia 
uh, even as we celebrate a resurrection, that the power of God's resurrection would help that country to find peace and harmony. And now as we prepare to conclude this service, may we conclude this service with this song on our lips, all praise to God the Father who has created us. All praise to Jesus Christ, his Son, who has redeemed us. And all praise to the Holy Spirit, who empowers and guides us. Amen and amen. We'll go singing in our benediction song. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. We want you to remember that we love you, that God loves you, and that we miss you and look forward to seeing you again. with joy as you love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.